Today, we're going to ride Porcupine Rim, one of the most technical and dangerous rides in Moab, Utah. The original plan was to ride a 26-mile odyssey called the Whole Enchilada, for which we had already booked a shuttle. The weather didn't cooperate, but the shuttle company gave us the option of starting further down the mountain. This meant we could still ride Porcupine Rim. We took them up on that. The driver instructed us to take Jimmy Keene Trail for a few miles. This was a fun, flowy warm-up which ended at UPS, or Upper Porcupine Single Track. This is where the party gets started. UPS has everything from slick rock to sand to fast and windy sections. Sometimes the trail runs right along the edge of the mountain, revealing amazing views of Castle Valley. When you see pictures of Porcupine Rim, you'll always see shots like this. Wow. I don't know whether the fog and rain made the view worse or even more magnificent. This is incredible. Gotta stop for the views. Sure. Let me just get to the top of this. Yeah. Going for it! <laughs> oh my god, don't do that. <laughs> Oh, that's the trail. <laughs> the trails are actually well marked, but I somehow ended up off track quite a few times. The others quickly learned the consequences of taking my wheel. Oh, shit, don't hold my wheel. Uh, Wrong turn. It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> After shredding UPS for a few miles, we reached LPS, or Lower Porcupine Single Track. This is where things really start to get interesting, because you can take one of two routes to the lower section. We took the one to the right, which was an impossibly tight switchback. A lot of people walk this part, but this dude was committed to cleaning it like a freaking boss. Oh, you got some... Oh, God! Oh. <laughs> it went over here, and then in this... Oh. Yes. The second left hand turn took me a few tries to clean. Take, take the outside. <sighs> This switchback seemed like a qualifier for what was to come, because the really rough stuff was ahead of us. Dude, this is epic! We were bombing so many ledges so fast that eventually one got the best of me. It was slanted in the opposite direction of the trail. Oh, the whole dropper switch is bent. <laughs> there you go. Will it stay? I'll figure it out. Will it stay? Yeah. Uh, well, no. Well, a few repairs up on the handlebars, and we were on our way. <laughs> Lower Porcupine single track eventually gives way to a Jeep road, or as the sign says, simply Porcupine Rim. This seems to be the only part of the trail that people complain about, and I guess I can see why. It's the single longest section which is composed of loose, unvaried, chunky double track. It's definitely not my favorite section, but we were all smiling ear to ear the whole way. If you're a good descender with a capable bike, you can totally bomb the Jeep road. The scenery is also incredible in every direction, and if you're taking your time, there are fun slick rock features to session along the way.
There were a couple of times we stopped just to discuss what an awesome time we were having, so I thought the jeep road was fun. Still, it seems plain and boring compared to the final section along the Colorado River. This is known as Porcupine Single Track, and it's the stuff of legends. It's so insanely quiet here. Things get faster in this section, and everything on your right starts to get increasingly interesting. After a few minutes, you're riding along a cliff. Fast as balls. Holy crap, look at that view! As the exposure increases, so too does the difficulty of the features. It's like the last level of a video game, where everything culminates into one epic battle to the finish. Things keep ramping up. You guys all right? All right, just checking up. We regrouped and reached a pathway between two boulders. What is this? Wait, which way is the trail? That's where the trail is? All right, hold on a second. That's me going OTB on a two inch high rock. What just happened? After watching this from three different camera angles, it's still not clear what happened. I licked my wounds and climbed back up to clean it. At the bottom of those rocks, it wasn't immediately apparent where the trail went, but there was a sign. No, it's up. It's no, this button. I think up. I saw, I saw an awesome video where somebody bunny hops up that. <laughs> That's where the trail goes. Uh -huh. That's hard. All right. Two more gears down the cassette. Whoever decided to leave this ledge here as a final technical challenge deserves a medal. They could have piled up some rocks in front of it or chipped away at the top to mellow it out. But instead of dumbing it down, they left one gem of an obstacle for advanced riders. It took me three attempts. If you've ridden or attempted this feature, I want to hear about it in the comments. After a little bit more technical single track, we had officially survived Porcupine Rim. Oh, oh God, how did yeah, I do this to myself on day one? We began our ride back into downtown Moab for a much needed recovery meal. Like I said earlier, Porcupine Rim is actually part of a much longer ride called the whole enchilada. The next time we're in Moab, we'll eat the other half of the enchilada and bomb Porcupine Rim once again. Hopefully the weather cooperates and we can really film this in a way that does it justice. Here's one camera view that is not happening today. If you're craving more footage from Porcupine Rim, check the description for some links. Thanks for riding with me today and I'll see you next time. Holy crap, this is amazing.